Our son Nicholas, who's eight and a half, was Alexander's uh, six and three quarters now. Well, our son Caleb is now uh, ten years old. He's diagnosed at what? Uh, yeah. Our daughter is Isla. She is three years old, almost four. Allergic to peanuts, milk, fish, eggs, beef, strawberries, milk products, and shellfish. Nuts, sesame, and walnuts and tree nuts. Every kind of nut to ten nuts. Eggs and cow. Rye, sesame, mustard, sweet potato, dairy, beef. He's had several anaphylactic reactions. I feel like the worst mother ever to leave her kid in anaphylaxis not knowing it was going to happen or was happening and had to sit there waiting for him in the emergency room. It's so pervasive for every aspect of life. If I have a face cream and it's got dairy in it, I can't snuggle up with him after I've put it on. If you think there's been any ingestion of any food that isn't, you know, that causes, might could cause an allergic reaction, you just have to be super hyper aware. Trying to teach Nicholas along the way to help prepare his own foods and keep himself safe. And his brother too. And his brother knows, you know, he's learning right along with him. Yeah. Learning to read labels and ask, can I have this? Is this safe? And you're trying to balance out with teaching independence and not being a helicopter parent, which is really... It's tough. It's tough. And it's very, very expensive. You know, we find we spend a lot of time grocery shopping reading labels. You can't assume that the Cheerios you bought one week have the same ingredients in them as they did, you know, a month ago. It, it changes. Food manufacturers change product lines are discontinued that you come to rely on um, and you just um, have to keep advocating and pushing in the school. You know, we, we do so well with teaching teachers how to use auto injectors, but we do a really poor job of teaching them how to prevent oh a reaction or an exposure. Um, you know, great, we were making apple crisp, we made it safe so Nicholas can have it and then the parent goes, dips the spoon that had just touched the ice cream, goes to cross-contaminate. And then everybody's like, oh, oh, thank goodness. And it's like, well, no, you could have just killed our son. The severity of what could have happened is so grave that you just, you can't just pretend it didn't happen. You have to actually deep, you know, debrief and say, whoa, okay, what just happened here? This could have been really serious. And you have to, as a parent, you have to push for that. You can't just leave your child with the neighbor's daughter. Can she use an EpiPen? Does she know when to use it? Does she, is she comfortable that she will use it if it's indicated? It's a chronic disease, it's not, you know, we can always hope he might outgrow things, but people expect that it's going to go away. It's a struggle to not isolate yourself, because it is isolating, because our society revolves around food. You uh, go over for dinner, well there's lots of food here, I'm sure there's something he can eat. Actually not, but we'll be happy to come and we'll bring him something. It's it exhausting. Takes, it takes a toll. It's, it's a part-time job. It really, really is. Yeah. I was nervous and anxious because uh, you get trained in it and there's awesome training at the Allergy and Asthma Center. I'm so glad I went there. You think that they'll just get better, but he said that children have actually died. Even when they, they take it too late, they've died. He always asks what the ingredients are and you know what, if he can eat, that's okay. Like he's really accepted it. And kind of what we tried to teach Caleb. I mean, even at school, um, you know, he has to only eat the food that we send him. Like, if we go to a birthday party, he eats what I bring. Steep learning curve. Yes, especially uh, grocery shopping. We yeah. are very lucky that we have uh, friends whose child also has pretty much the same allergies. So yeah. we learned a lot from them, and they told us where to get things and the brands and different stores. Because there's so few things that you can buy. Uh, but we eat really healthy now, like that's one positive thing. It's lots of fresh food. Uh, we basically make most of our stuff ourselves. We don't go out to restaurants and eat. No. And uh, if we would go, bring our own food. Our own food. The hardest part I'd say was educating your parents. Yeah. Your grandparents. It's, it's, it's different educating other people that aren't experiencing it every day. There's still, there's still mistakes that happen. It's just constant. And I know that coming up, when she goes to school, that will be another challenge. And even just birthday parties that will come up. Yeah, or when she goes to them, there's going to be cake, and we'll bring our own. Um, or food, and we'll bring our own. 
me that's very sad because there's things that she's going to miss out on yeah. or not be able to fully be able to participate in. You don't want your child to be excluded. Even at schools, there's hot lunch dates where they get pizza or Subway lunch. But well, we can't do that. you got to give parents notice, like, don't just... And for parents, don't just drop off cookies and muffins because for parents like us, we have to deal with the backlash when she comes home and thinks she couldn't have any. Where if we have any, if we have some notice, we can send a special treat with her and then she's part of it, right? So. It's our life and sometimes it makes me really angry and really upset, um, but or we'll go to Subway or make a special pizza instead. So, But with all that, there's extra prep, right? So. The school goes to the ice cream store like in the summertime. Like, like sometimes we sent it with her in a cooler, but we could also you know, have to go drive to the ice cream place like the night before, give them one that says her name on it, which gets there that That's it feels it it's, looks normal, right? It feels so. authentic, even though it's all pre planned. Yeah. But you don't want them missing out. The last three years of my life, or just a complete blur. I can't remember anything because that first year for us was hell. Like it was awful. I think she was diagnosed with God, how many foods? It would be as high as 12. And I have all the appointments here and when you have a kid that's allergic to multiple foods, you can't buy, you know, sauces. You have to make everything yourself. And so you need to know kind of what you're able to work with. It's expensive. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's very expensive. expensive. Grocery shopping takes a very long time. She eats a pretty clean diet. Um, but anything we do buy, everything has to be read just to make sure that nothing's been missed. I do buy some, um, you know, like cow's milk, yogurts or cheeses that are all individually packaged just for my son to take for his lunches, but that stuff is in a big Rubbermaid container on the top of the fridge so that Isla has no access to it. Mm -hmm. And it probably took us a good maybe year and a half or so of dealing with all of these allergies in order to feel comfortable enough that we would be able to and have that in the house. Going back to work stress and you know, daycare stress. And we have an almost four year old at the time too. Yes. Like, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was awful. I'm sure anybody who's watching this knows how hard it is to actually find a daycare. Just never mind good daycare. Yeah, never mind good daycare, yeah. just random daycare. Um, so you have all those struggles, but then uh, you know you, you find a place and maybe it's not good. Maybe you, you go there and it's like, oh, this doesn't look like they can deal with the allergies. So that happens, and then uh, you get other ones where they're not all that nice to you, and they find out that you have food allergies. Um, so you have to kind of deal with the reality that that you know, when your child is eating, they will be eating near somebody that is eating something that is potentially fatal, which is scary. Mm -hmm.